السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Welcome guys Today we're going to be asking this question In the discussion of monotheism Does it matter if the uh, individuals involved are co-equal or not? So the question will be Imagine you have three co-equal gods And imagine you have three non-co-equal gods Meaning there is hierarchy there. Is monotheism in any of the two? In the case of the one where we have three gods that are co-equal. And in the case of the one that are subordinate to each other. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is that when I was reading like the Christian sources, the main objection, and by the way, we use their own criteria. I told you. The orthodox position in 325 class the Arians, the Arians are the ones that are saying the there was a time the the sun was not, and I will get into all of that for you guys later. But the point is that they told the Arians that they are polytheists, that they have three gods, and I will tell you why they are saying they have three gods. The Orthodox guys that were writing at that time, they are saying that the Arians are they have three gods in there because of they are subordinate to each other. So they are saying the Arians because the Father and the Son are not co-equal, therefore. They must be two gods. But if they are co-equal, then you have one God. How? And I'll show you why this reasoning, it doesn't work. Okay? So, the whole point they are using, one of it is like, for example, eternality. Eternality means you had no beginning. The Arians are like, since the Father is the cause of the Son, then, therefore, the, the Father has to be there before the Son. So, there's a difference that the father must be there. And all of them agree that the father is the cause of the son. However, the Arians want to say that, see, if the father is the cause, every cause must precede its effect. Okay? The one that is causing must be there before the one that is caused the result of the effect, at least. So, the orthodox guys, they looked at this and they're like, you know what? This is problematic because now you have the father that is, well, it was always there and then the son came to be because of the father's action. So they, they charge the Arians that they are saying that the father and the son, they have two different natures. How? Because they are not eternal. Both of them are not eternal in a way. Now, that was the charge. And they said it. They are the ones that charge the Arians polytheism due to subordination. Due to what is classed as subordination. That now, you, because God by definition is supposed to be eternal. Okay? And many other things that can come from that. But the point I want you to get from this video is this. The Arians are polytheists or tritheistic because they believe the son was the result of the father's action. Therefore, he was not always there. He came to be. Okay? So, therefore, they cast them as they have three gods. But most of the Arians, actually, they would just say, you know what? The father is the only true God there. The son and the Holy Spirit, maybe they are divine, but the father is the main God. Okay? Now, what the orthodox position now falls to is this. Then, since they want to maintain the co-equality, and by the way, let me just touch on equality. What does equality mean? Remember this, equality is not the same as identity. Equality is not identity, okay? So, two things can be equal. Equal in what? There has to be that question. They are equal in what? Identity, however, is not shareable. You cannot share your identity. So, two things cannot be, a thing is identical to itself. You cannot be identical to something else. And by the way, you cannot say, you know, the term identical twins, in strictly speaking, is not actually correct because they are not actually identical. To be identical means you can never differ. Okay? Now, co-equality on the other hand, equal, for example, Barcelona and Real Madrid, they are equal. <laughs> not right now, but normally. When you say twins are equal, meaning they have the same power, probably. Okay? So the orthodox position, they want to maintain the equality of the fa of the persons there, the father and the son. They want to maintain the uh, equality of nature. When they say nature here, they are talking about, for example, eternality. That's why, like reasonably, everyone knows. Like if you watch my video I made about Eunomius, Eunomius was an area saying that, see, a cause must precede its effect. Okay? The cause must be the one that is there before you see the effect. So every effect is, every cause is prior to its effect. So they said the sun 
came after the father. Okay. So they saw this as difference in nature. So they want to say, since they, they, the the orthodox want to maintain this, they said the son is eternal also. So the effect is eternal with the cause. Okay, that's the mystery of eternal generation, because they are tra- because the question they ask. If we read like people like Saint Ambrose, this guy, this man who's saying that, see, if we want to maintain that they are actually co-equal, then the son must be eternal also. So they transfer that property of eternality to the son. Okay, and I'll show you at the end of this video what they cannot transfer. Something that is still there that cannot be transferred. That all of them they missed it or they didn't think is really it really matters. But to us it matters. Okay, so they thought that since the father and the son they have the same nature, meaning they are sharing the same nature, universal nature. Okay, therefore the son must be eternal also because if he's not eternal, then you have two different natures. Okay, so that was the argument. So on the face level, let me just tell you guys. Just because two things are co-equal, it doesn't mean that they are identical. Once you get that, you will know that. So the tritheism objection is not avoided just by you telling us that uh, the, the three gods that you have, they are co-equal. Even if they are not co- whether they are co-equal or not, you still have three gods. Okay? That's the whole point I want you to get. Let me see if I can find... Uh, I, have some, I want to show you some illustration. Okay? So... Remember, co-equality is not the same as identity. This is what they, they, they missed, okay? Now, if the Aryans... Now, it just remember all the polytheistic religion, you know. Most or all of them, they are subordinationist kind of religion. Subordinate, a hierarchical kind of theology that they have. So, they have the higher God or different gods just play different roles. And those gods are not co-equal. I've never, I've never heard of any polytheistic uh, religion, okay, the pagans or anyone that you know, that they have co-equal gods. Their gods are not co-equal. They always fight each other. They always. It's not about co-equality that shows you to be a polytheist or not. It's about the number, the amount of gods you have in there, okay, such that the, uh, what's it called, the orthodox position of saying that they are co-equal is still polytheistic. Okay, in just this, in this sense, it's just non-hierarchical, meaning the persons are co-equal. Fine, you just have three gods that are perfect, three perfect gods compared to three, um, maybe three gods that are not perfect. One is greater than the others. Okay, now let me show you where the iron spot or what later is problematic for a lot of people today. There's a verse in the Bible that says that the Father is greater than I. The early Christians read this and they're like, yeah, the Father is greater than the Son. Yeah. What does that mean? Did they talk about incarnation? Did they talk about uh, because he was a man? No, no, no. When they said the Father is greater than the Son, they said yes. Even the Orthodox. And I'll show you why. We can also use their own argument against them. They said, see, the Father is greater than the Son because of origination, due to causation. Remember in the first instance, they were able to transfer eternality to the, uh, to the Son. Just because He has the same nature as the Father, they transferred all the divine attributes to the Son. Okay? They did that. The, th- the thing they missed in this case is that causation. The Father caused the Son to exist. They affirmed it. Okay? They affirmed this that the Father caused the Son to exist. This is the problem. And a lot of uh, modern Christians now, people like William Lane Craig, they have denied this. Okay, They are trying to say, no, the Father didn't cause the Son to exist. But the Orthodox guys, that were the ones charging people with tritheism, they held this position. So, let's not make this too long. Since they have held that position, that the Father caused the Son to exist, you can really see that it's not about identity. It's about co-equality. Like if you were, if you were ever doubting if it was identity. It just shows you they have, because now they have differed. They have differed in the fact that the Father is the cause and the Son is the effect of the cause. The cause and the effect, they are not the same. Okay? We know that. So now, since they have differed, the whole talk about nature stuff, like uh, if there's any distinction, then uh, they, then there are two, per- uh, what's it called? 
then the aliens because the aliens they say they they are not co-eternal okay the eternality only the father is eternal the son came to be later so uh, they charge them with uh, polytheism now you guys have the father having a particular thing about him being the cause <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry guys being the cause of this whole thing okay and the son the effect that is a distinction the old thing you are trying to avoid, they are not co-equal. And by the way, that because they said greater, you know, that greater, the father is greater than I. They were the ones using this verse. They are saying, yeah, yes, the father is greater because the father is the cause, is the one that is unoriginated and the son is the originated one. So even without all of this, by the way, even if the, let's say you have three unoriginated gods, which people like uh, William and Craig later they are ascribing to right now that you have three gods they have no causal dependence between themselves meaning not one didn't cause the other they are just eternal all of them it's still three gods see when they are three eternal unoriginated gods they are they are three gods now if you have three gods that they are causally dependent but they are eternal but they are causally dependent that causal notion is there it's still three gods now if you have subordination meaning one cause the one other one to exist that's one and it's also they are not eternal it's still three gods do you see it's still polytheistic and this is just a normal polyte polytheism definition not even talking about islam because when it comes to islam it's even see let me say let me say tell you something let's say you believe in one god okay and then you start worshiping some other stuff <laughs> we we can even charge you maybe not polytheism strictly but associating partners with God. Mushrikun. Mushrikun it can mean different things. It can mean like you think there are many gods. It can mean that you are giving to God what you are supposed to, uh, giving to someone else what you are supposed to give to God. That's another one. Okay? So, that on a normal level, three of these cases, they are still polytheistic. So, you guys, let me see what you think about this, uh, what I've just explained. If there's anything you need me to clarify on, uh, I'll do that. So put your comments. Let me see what you think. But I hope you get the point. Any which way, co-equality doesn't mean identity. Therefore, you have three gods. Whether they are co-equal, it doesn't matter. Whether they are uncaused, it doesn't matter. Whether they are subordinate to themselves, it doesn't matter. What matters is how many, how many of those people, how many individuals do you have in your doctrine of God? For, for, for crying out loud. How many? That's what dictates monotheism. Such that I believe in one God and then I believe this guy is also God. I'll get on that into another video. Can other people be called God in a lesser sense? Like divine? Okay. Can we call prophets divine? Does that mean they are gods? We'll get into that in another video. So let's end this video, guys. So I hope you benefit from this. So see you guys later. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.